Let's now consider some factors that affect the performance of a CPU. So performance being how much you can get done in a set amount of time. So if you wanted to upgrade your CPU, what would you change about it to make it better? The first one we've touched on before, which is the clock speed. Uh, this is measured in Hertz. Modern processors are in the range of gigahertz. And Hertz is the unit of frequency, just in general, uh, which in this case is cycles per second. So as we've talked about, the clock is there to regulate circuits, including the CPU. And the clock produces signals that oscillate, so between a low voltage level and a high voltage level, and the CPU can use that. In fact, it uses the cycle, which is the time between two oscillations, um, and it uses this cycle to essentially define how many instructions, a set number of instructions, which can be executed per clock cycle. So traditionally, or in the past, maybe only one instruction would be executed per clock cycle. But now it may be many instructions per clock cycle. But the, the fact remains is that it's designed to execute a set amount per clock cycle. And just a quick um, difference. Uh, we talked about a fetch execute cycle, which is the actual cycle it goes through per instruction. That's different to a clock cycle. If you were only executing one instruction per clock cycle, they'd be the same in terms of length, but they're not necessarily. So they are different, so watch out for that. It's also called a clock tick. It's the same thing as a clock cycle. But regardless, the clock speed is the same as a clock rate, which is Hertz, so it's slightly different. Um, so the faster this, these cycles are, the faster the clock speed is, the higher the clock speed is, rather, the higher rate, the more instructions can be executed per second. Because you're dealing with a set number of instructions per cycle, if you have more cycles per second, then you're going to execute more instructions per second. Meaning that if you increase the clock speed, you also increase your performance. This is why people overclock their processes if they want to increase the speed of a processor than what it was shipped with when they bought it. You can increase the clock and so overclock your system and it will increase the speed. Obviously there's a limit, you can't do this infinitely because it's not designed to work at really high speeds and it produces more heat and so on. But um, effectively increasing the clock speed will increase the speed overall. The second factor is the size of the cache. And as we've discussed, the cache is a very small, fast, store of data that is there to speed up the operation of the fetch stage. It's there to kind of act as a bridge between the memory and the processor. So it's kind of like a pool of memory used to speed up the operation by storing frequently used instructions and occasionally just intermediate kind of steps. So it doesn't have to keep going back and forth between the slower memory and go to the faster RAM instead, faster, sorry, faster cache instead. So it's there to speed up the operation of the computer. And the larger the cache, the more instructions can be accessed faster, essentially. So the cache is always going to be smaller than your RAM. But if you increase it slightly, then you can put more instructions in it. They are more likely to be accessed when you search for cache for an instruction and it's there, that's called a cache hit by the way, and if you search for cache and it's not there, that's called a cache miss. The more instructions are going to be there, the more likely you are to get a cache hit, and so the speed will increase, but obviously up to a limit because it defeats a point if the cache becomes too big, as we'll discuss in a second. So the cache size being increased a little bit, maybe in the order of kilobytes, um, the performance will increase as well because more instructions can be accessed faster. Another factor is the type of cache, and as I alluded to, this is because of a trade-off between speed and size. Size, we've just talked about, the fact that there's a higher hit rate, which sounds very sinister. It's more, you're more likely to get a cache hit the larger it is because more data can be stored in the cache. But without any other factors changing, like you improving your technology, the speed of it, the latency, is the technical term, how quickly it responds, is going to go down because it's got more to search, it's going to be harder to find, harder to determine whether your data is actually there, it's going to take a longer time. But obviously you can improve both, ideally, and to kind of deal with this trade-off, um, a computer, a modern computer, will have multiple levels of cache. Most computers have what's known as an L1 cache, actually embedded in the chip, so part of the CPU. And this will be the smallest in terms of capacity and the fastest in terms of its speed. And this will store you know, the most frequently accessed instructions, what is most likely to um, get a cache hit. Often a system will have L2 and possibly even L3 cache, which may not be on the chip, it may be in some cases, but it's usually kind of in between the CPU and the RAM. These are slightly larger, and by the way, L1 cache typically might be a few kilobytes, uh, so the L2 and L3 are larger, but therefore slower, and they're more there to back up the L1 cache, where 
the the one cache is where the hits are going to be most likely but these will store slightly less frequently access instructions and maybe these will be where temporary data will get stored so it's not quite as simple as just increasing the size you may also want to if you only have say l1 and l2 cache currently you might want to add l3 cache if you were kind of given a question about a prospective cpu that could be something you could suggest having a different level to maximize this benefit the cache gives you by being much faster than for ram our final fact is the number of cores a CPU has, and so you can have multiple processing units, which is what a core is, within the same chip. So on the same chip, you can have multiple processing units. Each processing unit might have its well, will have its own ALU uh, control unit, and maybe has its own registers as well. And so effectively, it's like having multiple CPUs within a larger CPU. And this means that instead of executing only one instruction at one time, when the software is optimized, and this is a big caveat multiple cores allow you to execute multiple instructions simultaneously so in parallel but it's not quite as simple as this it's not going to be 100 percent efficient so if you have two cores it doesn't mean you can execute twice as many instructions at the same time not only has the software the programs have to be optimized so does things like the scheduler and anyway it's not going to be 100 percent efficient it's always going to not quite be two times as much or four times as much but at any rate if everything works out okay, you're going to be executing more instructions simultaneously. So the best process is to have multiple cores. And usually each core will have at least their own L1 cache and maybe L2 as well, depending on how it's designed, but they usually share a common larger L3 cache. So this means for multiple instructions, as you increase the number of cores, the performance is going to increase because more can get done per second because you have multiple units working on the same problem. But it's important to realise that the performance won't increase in a linear fashion, it will not quite be 100% efficient always. But generally, if everything's optimised, then more cores is advantageous. So we've only looked at four factors, and these are probably the main four factors. But it's worth noting that manufacturers are doing everything they can to increase efficiency, to increase speed. And often that means they kind of go against some of the theory we've been looking at so far. So bear in mind that in actual implementations, loads of things are going to be different to what we've learnt about. This is just a, a massive simplification, but it's obviously very important you know the theory.